hey, it's getting close to St. Patrick's Day in our house. That means we're going to be doing some corned beef and cabbage, and I'm going to cook it out on my Yoder instead of in the oven or in the kitchen. So, because you know, I'm all about cooking on the grill outside. Um, what I have, um, it, this is about a four pound corned beef brisket flat. And I've got the traditional veggies that go with it, but um, with our cabbage today, instead of just doing um, regular cabbage, I'm going to actually core. I'm going to show you. I'm going to core this cabbage, and we're going to stuff it with some butter and seasonings, and put it out on the smoker while the corned beef is cooking too. So, the first step, um, I, I like to get a little seasoning on the the corned beef. So I'm using my all-purpose seasoning, which is salt and garlic powder and black pepper and a couple other herbs. Now, if I wanted to make pastrami, I would have soaked this corned beef out for 24 hours. But um, I'm, I'm on the traditional St. Patrick's Day fair, uh, just corned beef and cabbage. So I didn't give it a soak. I just rinsed it real good. But we got some seasons on it. Um, I'm going to go outside and get my smoker fired up. And then I'm going to work on the cabbage, show you what I'm going to do to it. So uh, this is going to be something everybody can do for St. Patrick's Day. So stick around. Okay, we're back here with the cabbage part of our recipe today. And um, I have just, I think this one weighed three pounds, two and a half, three pounds of cabbage. But what I did was I just uh, took my knife and I made a couple cuts around the core, cored it kind of down in a wedge to where I could pull this out. And I want to be able to, you know, kind of set the core back in as it's cooking. But for right now, we want to season down in the cabbage. And I'm just going with the same season that I put on the corned beef. Give it a good dose of that all-purpose seasoning. Now, if you don't have all-purpose seasoning, um, it's salt, black pepper, granulated garlic. That's, I mean, it'll substitute just fine. And I've got a, about a half a stick of butter that I'm gonna cram down in here and just kind of mash in. But we kind of want the core to go back on it a little bit too. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of Worcestershire and let that run in there. It don't need a whole lot of Worcestershire. Let that run down in, and we'll put the core back in, best you can. And now what you want to do is get it wrapped up in aluminum foil. And we want to leave the top exposed so we can get some smoke in it. We'll, we'll cover the whole thing up later on, but all I'm doing is just going to kind of bunch it up around it. And we're going to set this in the cooker when we get our corned beef going. And we're going to let it smoke. Um, 250 degrees, three or four hours is what it's going to take this cabbage. I'm going to let it go about an hour, hour and a half uncovered like this to absorb some smoke into it. Then I'm going to cover it up with some more aluminum foil and to where it'll really steam it. And that's what's going to make this cabbage good and tender. It's going to be packed with flavor. So we're good to go on the cabbage. As soon as my cooker gets up, I'm going to put the corned beef on and it's going to be ready here in a little while. So stick around. Okay, I have the yoder fired up set it to 250 degrees and I'm just going to place the corn brief right in the center on the bottom rack and I just I want, to, I want to get some smoke in it right now um, we're going to cook this in a pan in liquid um, it's basically going to be braising to break it down and I'm going to add the vegetables the onions the carrots the potatoes at the end but I need about two or three hours head start on the corned beef. So I'm gonna smoke it for two hours, then I'm gonna get it in a pan, get it in some liquid. I'll show you all that, stick around. Okay, it's been a couple hours. You can look in here and see I've got the brisket. I moved it to a, a large um, full-size pan. Now I've got, I've got the smoke in it and I've got the seasoning started, but what we're gonna have to do now is really get it cooked and get it tender. So um, we're using water. Uh, this, the reason why I'm using water, not something else, because this corned beef brisket flat has been brined in a salt and seasoning solution and it's packed full of flavor. Well, I want to pull some of it out. The traditional way of doing corned beef is to boil it. Well, I don't want to just boil it. I wanted to do it on the smoker to get some flavor in it, but I'm going to put it some water in this pan and get it. You can see how much I brought it up, but almost to the top of it. I'm going to get this really simmering really good. I'm going to cover it with full and then we're going to break it down. It's going to draw out some of the the salt, some of that seasoning that's inside that corned beef and make it really good. And then towards the end of the process, we're going to add our vegetables, let them soak up some of that flavor from this juice that's uh, cooking out and the water, the way it's going to be flavored. I want to get my probe, my chef alarm here off in it so I can kind of get an idea of what it's doing. And there's no, just get it in. We want to make sure you hit meat. You don't have to be real deep. That's perfectly fine. I got it set 190 degrees on the chef alarm. 
You can see it's about 130 right now internal. We've got a little ways to go. About an hour and a half, I'm going to add the vegetables to it. I'm going to get it covered up with full, let it cook. Uh, bump the temp up on the yoder to about 300 just to get this water good and hot in here. We want it really simmering. So. Okay, I've had that corned beef on for about an hour wrapped here in the pan. Now it's time to start thinking about getting this cabbage cooked. And I got it in my full, and you can see I left it open kind of to the top. The core's back in place on top of the butter. It's been seasoned down in it. It's going to get really good. It takes about two, three hours to get this cabbage really tender. The first part of the cooking, I'm just going to place it on the shelf on the yoda right in front of the corned beef, and I'm going to let it cook, get some smoke in it. Then we'll wrap it up to where it'll really steam and break down and get soft and tender about the same time the corned beef is done. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half and you can see the cabbage has got some smoke on it. Um, I'm just going to unroll the full and cover it up really good. We'll get it back on there and let it finish tenderizing, but it's time to add the vegetables as well. So let's take a look and see what we're doing here with the corned beef. Be real careful, it's going to be hot and steamy. Look at that. Oh, it smells good. Looks good too. It's got a nice simmer going on. You can see some of that meat sweat coming out. That's what we want it to look like. I'm going to go get my vegetables real quick and uh, add them to this pan. Onions and carrots. I just quartered up these onions. Potatoes, the larger ones are kind of quartered up. The small ones are just half. But I'm going to get some of these in here. Now I'm just going to cover it up, cover it back up real tight. I'll turn it just here. Get the lid back on it. All right, now that we got it, all the vegetables are in, the foil's back on the pan. We're just going to let it go for about another hour, see where we're at. I'll come out and start checking tenderness. It's probably going to take about an hour and a half, two more hours really to finish that corned beef and to get those vegetables tender. Put our cabbage right back on the front. Probe out the door. Let it roll. Okay, we're going to check the internals. I think we're sitting right about 195, according to my chef alarm over here. And that's exactly where I want it to be. I just want these vegetables to be to be tender. I know the brisk, uh, the corned beef is going to be really good. It smells awesome. What I want to do now is I want to check and see how my vegetables are, see if they're tender. And right away, I can see a potatoes tender, carrots, fork tender. So we're right. It's, it's, it's been four and a half hours. Corned beef is done. Looks really good. Vegetables are where I want them. We're going to take it in and let it rest. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to slice it and show you what we're going to do with the cabbage. It's already inside resting. But it looks really good. It's time for dinner. All right, here's the finished product, what we have from our uh, St. Patty's Day corned beef and cabbage. Um, first, I want to talk to you about the cabbage. I mean, of course, you're going to take the core out to where it held the place for all our seasonings and stuff down there. But what I do is I'll just take these outer leaves that got a little dark, just kind of pull them down away. And then all you do is really just want to quarter it. Just use a good knife and spin it around. And it'll just fall out. Man, it's so good. It's got the, the way the butter's cooked down in it and the seasons have got in there and it's just tender as it can be. Awesome way to try cabbage, not just for St. Patrick's Day, but it goes great with this corned beef. Good. Hot. Woo. Good stuff. That's good stuff. It's got some good flavor. But now we're going to move on to the star of the show here. This corned beef. The vegetables, they turned out really tender. I mean, carrots are really good. All of it's just melting in your mouth. But I want to take the corned beef flat down here and I'm going to slice it for you and I just use the brisket slicing knife and make just you know quarter inch slices about like you would a brisket it's be really moist and tender we cooked it to about 198 degrees so that's what it should look like when you slice it up I'll get a piece of it just here in a second the great thing about this is the leftovers you can make an awesome sandwich with this the next day, serve it on some 
good marbled rye bread with some spicy mustard, maybe some sauerkraut or some of that leftover cabbage. What we did, just to wrap up here, we seasoned up, we washed off the brine from the corned beef, we seasoned it up with a little extra salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of extra coarse ground pepper on top. Then we smoked it for two hours to get some real good flavor into this corned beef. And you can taste the smoke in it. I mean, the texture of the meat looks like this is how corned beef is supposed to look, but it's really got good smoke flavor. After that two hours, we covered it up in a pan with some water, and then we just let it braise in its own juices, just um, cooking all the way to it gets up to close to 200 degrees. And it turns out really good and moist and tender. Hmm. Awesome corned beef. But serving this with the vegetables that you put in that last hour and a half, they get perfectly tender. Going with the cabbage, it'll make any Irishman happy. If you like what we're doing here, um, howtobarbecueright.com, subscribe to our newsletter, check us out on YouTube, keep watching these videos, and as always, send your comments and questions. We love them. If you got any ideas, stuff you want to see me do, send them to me on Facebook, Twitter, however you want to get in contact with me. I'm always there for you. How to barbecue right.com.